Hello. Normally I'm working on audio and video equipment on this channel. Well, this isn't exactly video, is it? So this is a laser uh, sort of projector and it shines red and green lasers at the front and they do a sort of a, a pattern. It's got some sort of mechanism in there that makes them move. Um, but someone tripped over the cable the other day and it took a small impact. Not much, to be honest, not much at all. It might have been actually me pushing it back into the ground like that that was the impact. But for whatever reason, now the lasers come on, but they don't move anymore. It's got a light sensor at the top here so that it switches off during the day. So I'm going to cover that up and we'll have a look at what it does. As ever, I'll be plugging it into my isolation transformer. Uh, this button here changes uh, some of the functions, but as far as I'm aware, it doesn't change whether or not the lights move. So I'll cover up the opto sensor, switch it on, and see if we can get somewhere we can see the patterns. Uh, perhaps if I turn some of these lights off, that might help. Okay, so if we press this button, we can go red and flashing and red green. But at no point are they doing this wonderful pattern thing where the dots join and, and come apart again. Uh, let me just listen to it. It seems to be totally silent. I'm not sure if it normally makes a noise, but it's not apparently making a noise now. Let's uh, see if we can take it apart. Uh, there are some plugs here which are presumably um, covers over screws. So let's uh, see if we can get those out. Would this all be a bit easier to do without the stake? Let's take the stake off the bottom. Okay, there is a screw a long way down there. It's going to take a long uh, screw to get in there, screwdriver to get in there. Right, so I need a very long screwdriver uh, to get down that shaft. Oh, that looks promising. Okay, with four screws out, does it come apart at all? Is there anything perhaps under this decorative strip. I really hoped it would come apart quite easily having undone the screws. Are these possibly also bungs over screws? They might be. Yes, I think they are. I'm not sure how much that's going to help, but let's undo those screws. Anyway, it's got a little bit of condensation in here, so it'll do it no harm to let it dry out a little bit. Okay, that does need to dry somewhat. Yeah, there's definitely had an ingress of water into this thing. You can see that that's some sort of laser patterning on that, or holographic patterning. So what can we see? Um, it's not that accessible at the moment, is it? What we do see is there's a motor here. So this component is going to be doing the movement and down there we have presumably the lasers. There's a 45 degree, uh, that's going to be a, a, some sort of dichroic filter there which is allowing the red and green, we don't know which is red and green lasers but there's a red and a green laser there and there and then a uh, prism which will combine those two lasers and then send them up into this part. So if I switch it on we should see the red and green lasers. Uh, we need to be a little careful. So I'll cover the opto sensor and switch it on. And I think what we're seeing is the green laser is the bottom one and the red one is that one. But I don't think we're fooling the opto sensor. Anyway, the thing we need to know is the part that's not working is in here. We may be able to undo these screws and gain access to the top of the motor and find out what's wrong. Now, I need to be careful because again this piece here, you know, it's some sort of diffraction grating going on there. We don't want to uh, damage that. Right, so here's our motor drive and it rotates that grating there. Now we see we're starting to understand it. So this needs to be able to rotate.
Let's just try the motor. Motor is rotating, yes. Okay, there's not a fault there. Gearing down here. The rotation of the motor is much, much faster than the rotation of the final drive. So I'm not seeing a fault with any of that. Let's uh, see if I can make it operate now and we'll have a look and see if that rotates at all. Okay, so I've got both, I've got the lasers working but the motor is not rotating. So I really need to get it apart now in order to look at the motor drive. It might be the motor's just had it. Let's reassemble this because I don't want to damage any of that. It might be then coincidental that the wire got tripped over. It may have just failed due to motor wear. In order to get anything apart now, I need to take this top off, and it's not clear how that comes off. Maybe the top stays there and the bottom comes off. Maybe I'm pulling on the wrong thing. Aha! That was it. Oh, good. Right, if I can just pop the uh, opto sensor out or unplug it. Now, I don't know if it will work all the time without the opto sensor or not at all without the opto sensor installed. Now we have good access, we can find out if there's any uh, voltage to the motor. So, the labelled green, red, and motor is very well labelled. Nicely, nicely done, actually. Perhaps if I apply a small voltage to the motor. Uh, what voltage is the motor? Don't know, but I'm guessing. Probably about 6 volts. It doesn't seem to be marked. I'll try probably 6 volts. Maybe I'll start a bit lower. Okay, I've set my motor to 5 volts. I could use a connector to make with this. Uh, my uh, Parkside uh, connector kit. Very useful. I'm finding no end of uses for this thing. I've also noticed that the wiring is breaking up on the back here. So uh, perhaps I'll replace that before I uh, fully reassemble it if I get it working. Okay, we'll take this top off again and have a look to see if the motor's rotating. And if it isn't, it's the motor that's at fault and it's nothing to do with being tripped over. Ah, you see it got it going then. So it's a bad motor. I may be able to switch, squirt some switch cleaner into here, but I've got to be careful not to get it on the prism there. I don't want this near any of the optics. It's going to be a bit tricky. OK, I'll switch it off for a moment. Right, let's listen to that again. OK, that's running. Oh, look, we can actually see it rotating at the top here. Right, OK, so now I can plug the wires back in and test that. Okay, let me test it now without the opto sensor installed. I don't know if that's going to make it work or not work. It depends how it's wired. Okay, aha! You see, that's what it's supposed to look like. Well, it's not quite like that because there's supposed to be another effect as well where the lines come and go. But that's obviously as a result of having this assembly on the front. But you can see that's working. So what I'm going to do, the things I need to do now, I think, is fix this a bit because that cable is looking very uh, tired there and dry this out. So I think if I just take the seal off the top, there doesn't seem to be any particular orientation for this. So I'll put that in a, a dryer. Uh, I've got a dehydrator which I can put that into 50 Celsius for half an hour. I'm sure that'll dry it out and work on the power cable and we should be good then. Okay, can I undo this uh, gland at the back so that we can sort out this damaged bit of cable? Right, these sockets are normally used for fixing brakes and clutch cables and such where you have to run the cable through here, but uh, this might be just a job. That seems about right, 15 millimeter. 
It's a little slack. I wonder if I've got. I wonder if a 14 would be better. That's the 14. All right, I think it's a tight fit 14. And notice there's also a O ring there, which I need to make sure I put back in place. I don't think that would have come off without that tool. I think if you tried an adjustable spanner, it wouldn't have worked. Ah, but it doesn't get us that far, does it? Because we can't get the wire through there. So, alas, I can't fix that because there's no way of... I mean, if I drilled it out, maybe, but then you'd lose the waterproof seal anyway. So I think my best bet is just to put some self-amalgamating tape around the top here to keep the water out. Oh, well. Okay, so self-amalgamating tape as usually used on sealing up outdoor connectors for CCTV or satellite dishes or similar. I think the knack is to pull it nice and tight so the water can't run down the cable. Okay, plug in the opto sensor again. Although, to be honest, I find it something of a nuisance because once it's seen light, it switches off. But when the light goes away, it won't switch back on, which I suppose is for good safety reasons, but... Yeah, it's been a nuisance, really. I'm pretty sure the way it was done before was the button was opposite the, um, the, f the mount, so I'll do that. Try not to get any twists in this O-ring, which is determined to twist. Okay, so I can refit the big screws. Don't appear to have that lined up quite right. Now I do. Right, confirm that works by covering up the sensor. And switching it on. Yeah. And then reassemble the front. Hopefully it's dried out now. That hasn't entirely demisted. Uh, I'm a little worried about using isopropyl alcohol on it because I don't know how it's made. I will though because it's quite grubby. Also don't know if it matters which is the inside and outside. I will stop there. Right, I can still feel this ridge of gunge and I think that's going to be the outside. This might just be plain glass. This may not be a optical component. Extra patterning that we haven't yet seen, I think, is probably this grating in here. Seal goes on the top after these have been put together. Right. Now there's an ident notch on this thing. There. I don't know if that matters. Well, yes, it must, because this is the opening here for the opto sensor. So that has to line up with that. There we go. Right, let's just test that um, with the opto sensor covered up. That's correct. That's what we should see. I don't remember ever hearing it make that noise. I'll switch it on again, listen to the motor. No, it's outdoors, nobody will ever hear it. Good, I'll put that outside and uh, we can try it this evening. Well, that's come out really well in the end and you can see some of our other lights here. We've got these chasing LEDs, uh, WS2812 I think they are, and these are the fault tolerant ones so that if one LED fails, uh, it won't matter provided it can pick up the data from the previous one. But if two fail, it still goes wrong. And unfortunately, we've had that happen. I've had to patch out segments of the LEDs. So uh, they're not turning out to be particularly reliable. Anyhow, uh, I hope you've enjoyed what we've done here today. Normally, I work on audio and video technology. So have a look at my channel for some of that. For example, I have here the thinnest audio tape I've ever seen in my life. Look at that. I think it's one or two millimeters wide. So what's all that about? Right, I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.
And if you're wondering a little bit about what that super thin audio tape is about, it's for use in this contraption which has been given to me, which <laughs> apparently can put audio tape onto cine film. So we'll have to try to investigate what this is all about, plus a whole heap of other goodies that have been donated to me.